In this last video for the week, I want to put together all of the ideas I've gone over so far. I've defined vectors and some operations in algebra for them. I've talked about higher dimensions, particularly the need to make good definitions in higher dimensions. I've introduced the idea of proof and gave some advice on how to write proof. To put it all together, I want to show you some proofs about vector arithmetic, proof that will hold for vectors in any dimension. I'm going to do this by talking about basic properties of operations in mathematics, and I'm going to go over the three most important, commutativity, associativity, and distribution. An operation is commutative if I can change the order of the operation without changing the result. Addition and multiplication of numbers are commutative. If I add any two numbers, the result is the same regardless of which is first. 4 plus 5 is 9, just as well as 5 plus 4 is. Likewise for the multiplication number of numbers. 7 times 2 is 14, as well as 2 times 7. This rule sits so far in the background that you probably rarely even consider it when multiplying numbers, but not all operations in mathematics work this way. Happily, the addition of vectors is commutative. For any vectors u and v, u plus v is the same as v plus u. What is the proof of this? I need to prove in general, and I can't just draw the diagram from the previous video that showed an example that works. I need a general argument. Let me first do this for two-dimensional vectors. I'll write u and v as components, u1 and u2 for u, and v1 and v2 for v. I want to prove that uv plus v is equal to v plus u, but I can't start with that equation. I don't want to assume what I want to prove. Instead, I start with one side and try to work towards the other. The left is u plus v. I write this in components. Then I know by definition that vector addition is done in the components, so I can write the sum as a single vector with the components u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2. Now, in each component, I have the addition of ordinary numbers. u1 and v1 are numbers, so the order of the addition does not matter, and I can switch that to v1 plus u1. Likewise for the second components. And finally, I recognize that after the switch, this is just the sum of the vectors in the other order. And I've completed the proof. I've started with u plus v and ended with v plus u in a valid string of equalities. Notice in this proof, I never started with the equation u plus v equals v plus u. I must be careful with the structure of my proof. I can't assume what I want to be the conclusion. I could do this equally well for vectors in Rn, with arbitrary length instead of just vectors of length 2, and the steps are exactly the same. Write the vectors as components, use the definition of vector addition, inside the vector addition use the normal commutativity of number addition, then recognize that the result is the desired v plus u. The conclusion is that u plus v is equal to v plus u for any vectors in Rn, that vector addition is commutative. I've defined two major operations so far, vector addition and scalar multiplication. Vector addition is commutative, but what about scalar multiplication? Well, let me consider a number a, real number, and a vector u in Rn. The scalar multiplication au is another vector in Rn, the vector u scaled by some amount. Commutativity would ask about the other way around, u times a. However, here I must just, must just stop this operation isn't even defined. When I defined scalar multiplication, I said that the convention is to write the scalar on the left and the vector on the right. I don't have any operation at all with a vector on the left and a scalar on the right. In this context, commutativity is actually meaningless, since the other order of multiplication isn't actually given any meaning. You could declare that either order is the same scalar multiplication if you wish, and then it would be commutative, However, the convention of scalars on the left is a useful one and one worth preserving, so the mathematical convention is to simply not use a multiplication where the vector is on the left and the scalar is on the right. Let me talk about some other operation properties. In addition to commutativity, normal and addition and multiplication are associative. What does that mean? Associative means that if I have two instances of the same operation, then I can bracket them either way doing the first operation first or the second operation first. By way of an example, here is the addition of three numbers, 6 plus 4 plus 9. If I do 6 plus 4 first, I get 10, and 10 plus 9 is 19. 
Or if I do 4 plus 9 first, I get 13, and 6 plus 13 is 19 as well. Either bracketing works. Addition is associative. Notice that the order of the numbers is never changed here. This is not commutativity where I change the order, I just change the bracketing. Similarly, multiplication of numbers is associative. If I multiply three numbers, a, b, and c, I can do the first two first and then multiply by the third, or the last two first and then multiply by the first, and the result is the same. So, are vector operations associative? If I have three vectors, u, v, and w in Rn, then, I, then can I bracket their addition in either way? I can. The proof is almost identical to the proof for commutativity, so I won't repeat it here, but in brief, I write u, v, and w in components, I start on the left of the equation, do the addition component by component, and then use the normal associativity of numbers, like I used the normal commutativity of numbers, inside the vector, and then I recognize that the result is the right side of the equation. And again, I move from left to right to make a valid conclusion. Again, what about scalar multiplication? Is it associative? Here the question does make sense if I have two scalars a and b. Then the expression a, b, u is a valid expression, and I can ask, if I do the scalar multiplication b, u first, and then I do another scalar multiplication by the scalar a, is that the same as doing the ordinary number multiplication of a, b, and then taking the scalar multiplication with the vector u? That's what associativity means here. This identity is in fact true, and again the proof is the same technique of writing the vector as components and moving from one side of the equality to the other using the associativity of normal numbers. However, if I write one scalar and two vectors, then associativity doesn't mean anything. Why not? Since I don't have a vector multiplication, the product uv doesn't mean anything. So, so associativity works for scalar multiplication, but only with multiple scalars. This kind of structural subtlety is exactly what abstract mathematics is all about. Associativity is a relatively straightforward thing for normal numbers, but much trickier for scalar multiplication. I need a very clear understanding of the definition and particularly the notation to make sense of this property. This is a major goal of this course, to build up the skin skills to do this kind of analysis of mathematical structure. The last structure I want to talk about briefly is distribution. For numbers, multiplication distributes over addition. If I multiply a by a sum b plus c, then I need to multiply a by both pieces of the sum. This is called distribution. Distribution isn't a property of just one operation, it's about the interaction between operations. One operation distributes over another. Multiplication distributes over addition. For vectors, I also have two operations vector addition and scalar multiplication. However, I also have ordinary scalar addition. Does distribution work for any of these? It does in two different ways even. First, scalar multiplication distributes over scalar addition. If I add two scalars and then use the scalar multiplication on a vector, it's the same as doing the two scalar multiplications and then adding. Note something interesting in this. On the left, the addition is number addition, and on the right, the addition is vector addition. It's a bit confusing that the same sign is used here, but you are expected to keep track of the subtleties here, which addition is which. Similarly, I can add, I can have the addition of two vectors and then scalar multiplication, and this also distributes. I can add the vectors first and then do a scalar multiplication, or I can use the scalar multiple on both vectors and then add. I won't do a proof for any of these, but the technique is again like that for commutativity. Write the vectors as components, start on one side, apply the definitions, and use the distribution rules for ordinary numbers to move towards an expression that fits the left side.